All right, so the system is charged. 12.34 pounds of refrigerant. Uh, we're running balls to the walls. The indoor air temperature, if you look where it says air, that's the sensor on each indoor air handler, the wall mount ones, 69, 69, 70, 71. Now I just came upstairs. I turned the units on while I was downstairs. I walked out of the building, up the ladder, across the roof to the back of the building right here. And the temperature has already dropped from like 72.5 to 69 and 61 degrees. So right now this thing is running balls to the walls and it's screaming. You can actually hear it. When it has the cover, you definitely almost don't hear nothing. And I'm trying to do this without shutting anything off because I'm working with my gloves. And uh, right now, here we are. We're tracing the pressure. Those are your pressures traced for the guys who want pressures. You do not need your gauges because everything is handled right here. For the guys who go, oh, I'm going to try to use subcooling or superheat on one of these things, don't even attempt it, dude. It's just a lost cause because the factories have placed their temperature sensors in the areas they want them in where they know they should be taking the superheat and subcool. And when you are going to take superheat and subcool and test these systems, you put the system in its software and hardware into a test mode. When it's in a test mode, it will set the outdoor fans, the compressor speed, the indoor fans to a set program that it knows it needs the meat to actually do its test parameters, not just high, low, heat, or cold on any given day. It's a different animal. So these guys who keep trying to go beer can cold and stuff a few pounds in a system and go, don't, don't even go there. Uh, drain the system all the way down, fill it all the way back up. Do not top off these systems. I've came across so many of these systems overcharged several pounds or undercharged all because somebody grabbed it with their hand and were trying to go beer can cold or they were using their gauges and they were trying to go to a PT chart and a temperature of the day and some bullshit like that. You do not do these on these units at all. So remember before our uh, electronic expansion valves, they're, uh, what were they, that 450 or were they 600 on this unit? I can't, I can't, I've done so many of these in the last couple days that I can't, between 600 and 400 when they're really low. So look at our EEVs right now. We're at 132, 138, 128, 141, because we have enough refrigerant flow. Here is the temperature of refrigerant in and out, see where it says pipe in? That's the actual temperature of the refrigerant entering the air handler, the evaporator inside the room. Then pipe out, that's the actual temperature of the refrigerant leaving. So you'd say, what's our superheat? We're dead on even. So we, most guys say, oh, there's something wrong, man. We have uh, no superheat. There must be something wrong. No, there's no problem. Um, our compression ratio for you guys who like to do the measure crick and you want to go all, the way, go all the way down and get your compression ratio. This thing's screaming balls on the walls because I have it set for 64 degrees and the room is around 70 degrees. So since it has that much of a temperature difference, it is over and so let's go to, uh, let's see our Hertz. Let's go down here. So you can look at your Hertz. Here's your superheat. Here's your sub cooling. And let's go to cycle view. Okay, so here's your cycle view. We're running our compressor at 65 hertz right now. So we're overdriving because the unit is trying to be forced to catch up because I have the temperature selector set so low, it wants to overrun to catch up. And then once it satisfies, it'll start tapering off all by itself. You see that thing go all the way down to 20. Um, so here we're back at our expansion valves on our heads. Here's our heads. And there's our temperatures in and out.
There's our suction accumulator temperature right there, 45 degrees. And I'm close. My clamp is right here coming out of there. So I'm at 43 degrees. And the reason I'm at 43 degrees because you see this is insulated. Then we're coming exposed. My temperature clamp is right there. Their temperature pickup, it goes up here to your reversing valve, then goes back out, comes down. Their temperature probe is right here. So I'm before, and that's why I'm picking up a few degrees cooler than what they're picking up. This is where they want to measure temperature at. Remember, gauges mean nothing. And you do not use your gauges for evacuating. You do not use your gauges for recovery. You do not use your gauges for filling your system. You don't need gauges anymore. Alright, our room is down to 68, 69 degrees. Now, the thing with this room, this one particular room that has four heads in it has three adjacent, so imagine this was the room, but there's three adjacent rooms. There's one room here with a wall, there's a room in the middle, and then there's another room at the end. And at each one of these rooms, there's like a 2000 CFM fan, one pumping into this room and an equal one pumping back into the room. And they're doing that on each room. So they're actually sharing air between the three other rooms. Now the three other rooms have two two-ton air handlers at each corner, uh, kind of kitty quarter, one over here, one down here. Then the next room, one up here, across the long length of the room, another one down here shooting this way, another one shooting this way, another one shooting. So the rooms are set up identical in this way, and that's part of their redundancy. If any one system went down and the two air handlers that are located in this room, this room, and this room, those two air handlers, no two air handlers in any single room come off of one condensing unit. Everyone are shared one condenser, a different condenser, a different condenser, and then vice versa on the other side of the room. So in no way can this whole system ever fail and even if one or two complete condensing units there's so much air flowing in and out of the rooms. There's some way to maintain a room, even if some freak way, two units died and killed the two air handlers in the unit. Just the airflow of the air fans in the room that are sharing in this room would keep that one room at least somewhat under control. That's how much redundancy is built into this system. So we're about to log off here. We are done on this one. Gotta jump to the next. And signing off until next time. I did want to show you this ramping down and, and satisfying and everything like that, but I gotta get to work. <laughs> See you guys until next time.